Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey. Hello. Hey, what's up? Thank you for coming on. Sorry, I have a lump in my throat. <laughs> it's all good. I was eating, uh, I got, I love chocolate hummus. Have you ever had that? Chocolate hummus? Yeah. No, I've never even heard of that. It's so good, and I'll just eat it with oranges, but then it's just like, damn, I just ate like four oranges and a container of chocolate hummus. Like, that's not really like the healthy alternative. <laughs> <laughs> but it's healthy because it's hummus. Exactly. It's like, it tastes like candy. So, <laughs> <laughs> dang, I got to try that. But no, thank you very much. I appreciate your time and coming on. Yeah, for sure. You said you just. I'll just say yes to anything, you know. (laughs) I I interview a lot of rappers on this show, but I've had I love like my two genres are rap and like indie rock and a folk and everything. So like that genre. So I wanted to reach out more into that. And I'm a stand up comedian, so I'm all over the place. That's awesome. Yeah, I like I listen to like maybe like five minutes of <laughs> of one of your podcasts and then I was like noticing that you interview a lot of rappers. So yeah. I was like, hey, I made the cut. I don't I'm not very good at rapping, but no, no. <laughs> I need to get out of it too cuz I don't just listen to <laughs> rap. It's funny a friend of mine the other day I uh we were listening to rap and then I put on uh, one of your songs. And I went like, oh, I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind that I put on like an indie song. And the the person I was with is like, man, it would be a sad life if you could only like listen to one genre. Yeah, it's totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah, very true. So you said you just moved? Um. Yeah, I just moved back to Seattle uh, a couple months ago. I was living in L.A. for two years. I moved down to LA from Seattle right at the start of the pandemic. Like not on purpose, that's just what happened. Um, <laughs> oh no, and then it just went downhill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually was like kind of enjoying my time there um, when the pandemic was really bad because it was like great weather and uh, n- no traffic. Yeah, I wasn't missing out on things in Seattle because no one was doing anything. So I actually had a pretty good time, like the first year of the pandemic. And then why did you move things, down there in the first place? Um, I got a job at this record, this small record label down there. And then once COVID hit, it was like pretty much remote anyways. So, yeah, my bo- boss is super flexible. So I'm still working there, but living in Seattle. If you don't mind me asking, like, what's your job at a record label? Um, I'm in charge of like physical and digital distribution and like manufacturing like you know vinyl orders cassette orders all that um i do some graphic design really yeah see yeah. i'm such a um an outsider that i was like i don't know it's cool that you can fl- do both like be able to do music and tour and then have a job in it that yeah i didn't I think mean, that was a thing you know yeah i just before this i was working as a bartender um which was also flexible with touring but uh yeah it's just a little bit soul sucking so i needed a break from that but yeah i figured like i already know a lot about music so why not i i do feel like a little bit like too in the know now i wish i didn't know what was going on behind the scenes oh oh yeah that it <gasps> it's like a fine line or if it can like ruin your love for it yeah yeah That's- for sure i i'm having like a music industry overdose right now i actually work at two labels i work at another label in seattle so it's a little much was it better <laughs> but- when you had a job that had nothing to do with it and you could just kind of like check out um i mean i didn't like that job at all either so i mean th- these job like for being jobs they're they're good you know i work with a bunch of like cool like like-minded creative people so um yeah i really like the people i work with and i don't know if i would like any job to be honest i don't like working yeah you just want to be able to, this will do yeah <laughs> just want to be able to perform and stuff 
yeah i'd rather yeah i wish that music was like better paying because that would be chill to just do music that's something i um i've realized is like there's two steps to like the creative uptick i feel it's like you get a fan base and then you're like oh shit i have to create a business out of this and like make money yeah. from this. and that's way harder than getting the fan base in the first place yeah and it kind of sucks all the fun out of it you're mm-hmm. just like i didn't sign up to like run a small business i'm just trying to like write songs yeah well i was talking to uh sam herring from i don't know if you know the band future islands but i was oh yeah i was talking to him and he was saying like they were just a touring band that would do shows every night and then they just had yeah. this like success and then they're like oh we need to hire people to like do the merch and like this is now like a yeah this that all of a sudden you have like 10 employees <laughs> exactly and it's like yeah. oh i mean i'm definitely not at that place but i it's it's intimidating but i'm i'm starting to learn about it now yeah it's a lot i don't know like yeah in my band chastity about like we have an llc we've had an llc for a while and we've actually had we got business managers before we even had managers um because all the money stuff is just like we we don't want to spend our time doing that you know yeah and um, i bet it's even more difficult with a band yeah it gets pretty complicated there's a lot of different people to coordinate with <laughs> i don't love that part of being in a band but that's nothing can be like 100 percent good all the time you know yeah well that's something i'm very lucky that like with the comedian lifestyle of the podcast lifestyle like pretty much it's just me solo which again, yeah nothing's ever ever great the whole time but it's like all right now i just right. have to manage myself i don't have to manage at this point like others feelings and how they come in yeah life. that does simplify things for sure yeah I, I mean i've like done solo shows before and i'm yeah there's pros and cons to it <laughs> like yeah i don't know so it can get lonely being alone uh, up on stage i don't know how you do it <laughs> i find the- myself just like talking a lot like i don't I don't have like that much banter usually when I'm with my band. I don't feel, I think that I just feel uncomfortable when it's just me and it's silent, you know, like yeah. I got to fill all the space. Oh, so I yeah. I'm just like saying like stupid shit. That's the best part though. That's what I like. like yeah. I don't like when there's just silence in between songs. Cause that's where I, that's where like I can relate to. Cause it's like, Oh, I go up there with no music. Yeah. Talk. Like I want to see how you handle it. Totally. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's my little, like whatever, two minutes of stand up that comes into play. Like, Do you prepare yeah, jokes? it is fun. No, <laughs> definitely not. I definitely don't prepare anything, which is what makes it fun. Cause I'm just like, wow I that just came to mind like I don't know what's gonna come out of my mouth I don't really like I feel like it's really cheesy when people just say the same thing every night like they go on tour and they just have like the same kind of spiel in between songs oh yeah I couldn't do that couldn't do that but yeah some people will tell the same joke every night or like tell the same story I'm just like we're already playing all the same songs like mix it up a little bit you know or like I'm not even gonna give the the group, but I was on a tour, and then every night of the tour would be like, "We're gonna play you something exclusive that's never <laughs> been played before. You're the first." That's funny. It. And it's like on the sick city. You're like, I do oh. kind of like I do kind of like that joke. That is funny. <laughs> on this trick new, the fans on the new uh, tour with Carvalho, you're doing it solo. Yeah, well, I'm actually putting together a band to play my solo stuff. So Julia Shapiro band, or I've been calling it Julia Shapiro and the dumb bitches. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so (laughs) yeah, I should make some shirts. Let's say that. But yeah, we actually have our first show together as a full band tomorrow. Oh, really? We'll see how that goes. I might might need to fire some people. We'll see what happens. (laughs) How is that getting together a band that's completely done? Like before it was a band where everyone was kind of equal, I feel. Yeah. And this is like, you're the, you're in charge. It's you're t- the- yeah. I'm like, I'm like a cop, you know, I don't, <laughs> I didn't want to have to do this. I was just going to like 
probably not really tour my solo stuff and just like play solo shows every so often. But then um, I got the offer from Kurt and was like, oh, so was like, I really want to do that. Um, Chastity Belt couldn't do it. So I was like, hey, I'll do it with my solo stuff. And yeah, it seems like a, a good reason to put together a band and I'm glad I'm doing it, but it's definitely unnatural for me, like to just have to like tell everyone what to do. I hate feeling like a cop. Mm. Um, oh yeah, but, people are like fucking up. You gotta be on top of it. Yeah, I have to be like policing, like listening, like we're playing the songs together and then I'm also like listening to make sure that everything sounds right. So it's just like a lot of my brain can't take it sometimes. You know? Do you prefer that to just playing solo, like just you playing your songs on stage? Um, I think so. Yeah. If, when I'm playing solo, I just feel like, God, people must be bored by this. <laughs> 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 and like, I don't know, maybe they're not, but that just gets in my head. I'm just like, it's just me up here with the guitar. Like, uh, sometimes I'll play to backing tracks too, but I just feel like this must be boring for people. Like do you enjoy watching other people do that. If I really like their music, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I, I actually do really like, like Lucinda Williams, for example. I saw her live a while ago, but she played with a band mostly, and then she maybe did like two or three songs by herself, and I was like, those were that was the best part of the show. Mm. Um, that's, but that's that Lucinda is... Williams, you know? Yeah. I saw Jose Gonzalez and open up for Rufus Wainwright and the same thing when Rufus was performing with a band, it was great. But then when he did the solo stuff, that was just different. Yeah. But that was with a piano. I guess that's a little bit different. Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't want to, I feel like just me and a guitar, I feel like I'm like in college or something. I don't know. And I'm just <laughs> like playing. Yeah. I I just get in my head about it, but I mean, I might, depending on how many songs my band can learn, I might end up doing a couple by myself in the set, which is, I don't mind that. I think it's kind of nice to like switch it up a little bit, but a whole set of just like me and a guitar. Yeah. Sounds rough. Do you, I don't mean, you don't have to answer any of these questions, but do you like know these people well enough that you're like going <laughs> to yes. with them and everything? Definitely, definitely. I wouldn't, <laughs> okay. I'm not the kind of person who just like find people on Craigslist. Yeah, like, that's what I mean. If you were like, no. hey, need a band for an upcoming tour, I don't know. Like, Hell no. No, I feel like before, like my first priority for bandmates is like, can they hang? And then the second priority is like, can they play an instrument? Mm. So yeah, I have my friend Breeze playing bass. I'm in like two other bands with her. Um, childbirth and who is she so we go way back <laughs> um and then i have my friend shig playing lead guitar and like the three of us are all really tight we all like lived together last summer and then uh, my friend max is playing drums and he's great he's a great drummer um and yeah i feel i feel good about the band like we can all hang you know yeah I definitely like, not worried about that part of tour i'm just like because we haven't played a show yet i'm just like Ugh. and because all the songs were just like i wrote all the parts myself and recorded them like it, so it's more of like a recording project than like a live band so it's just like been a little bit hard to like translate that into a live did you band. do everything on your solo albums yeah pretty much like aside from uh. some trumpet and violin Okay, I was actually going to ask about the, the trumpet, <laughs> but yeah. that's wild. Yeah, I don't, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. I, I want to do it that way again. It's kind of fun. I don't know. It's fun to have like complete creative control in that way, but it's also like aggravating. Is it hard to then have people like play your babies then? Um, It's, yeah, it's like a little weird because I feel like, especially with drums. I'm not like a trained drummer. So my drum parts are kind of strange. Um, but Max is doing a great job learning them. But like, yeah, I met up with like a couple other drummers and like, just wasn't like translating. <laughs> um, Greg list ads didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think like what I would choose to do is probably like so different than like what other people would choose to do. So I kind of feel for them like trying to learn 
my parts. I, I've done that maybe in like one other band where I learned a part that someone else wrote and it was like, it really went like against everything. I was like, I don't, I never palm mute. Like, this is weird, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Just, one heart. <laughs> but, but I feel like it did make me like a better guitarist. Um, Cause I don't, I, it's like at this point, I don't really look up songs by other people to learn i used to do that so much in high school and college and then now i'm just playing my own stuff pretty much so i'm just stuck in my ways i'm not learning like any new skills on guitar yeah are you and i are you said you weren't classically trained on the drums are you like like did, were you classically trained like uh well like not classically <laughs> you know i i don't know I, I might be i might be too stoned and heard you say the word classically <laughs> no i think not. i did say that i did say that but um yeah i i've never taken drum lessons basically i've I taken mean, guitar did, like, lessons did you take like guitar lessons growing up yeah yeah i started playing guitar when i was like 11 or 12 and um took guitar lessons kind of like from then up until when i was like 17 so yeah did you know back then? Did I know like that I wanted to do this that that for a living or whatever? <laughs> it's such a hard, like, did you, I can only describe as like, there's a, t like, you know, when you're on your path. Right. I don't, I think maybe like subconsciously, but like consciously, like, no, not at all. Like I didn't, I didn't think I could. I was like really afraid of performing in front of people um and i hadn't ever like played music with other people i hadn't really written songs except for just kind of like joke songs um but i'd always been like really into music more than anything else i would say so and i yeah like i'd always thought like it would be like a dream to be in a band and like how cool would that be but i just didn't think it was possible you know like it just felt really like unapproachable I didn't know anyone who was in a band um yeah it just seemed like such a stretch but then when I got to college like I started like playing music with other people even though it's like kind of a joke like my band started as a joke because that was like the easiest way to approach it I think like yeah. to, to like set out and like do something really earnestly actually is very vulnerable so um yeah i'm glad that we started as a joke it made it it was a nice little transition into it um, what do you mean as a joke because like i also hear like i've read a lot of like articles and stuff and i hear like and yes some of your music is like humorous but i'd never call you like a joke band yeah um well all the songs that we were writing were kind of just like the audience we were catering to i guess was like drunk college kids um and I was just trying to like make people and like my bandmates laugh with like the lyrics. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. So actually, just, like, yeah, like joke, like songs. joke, joke. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then people started like we got like a better reaction than we thought we would. People were like really into us and. It was kind of confusing. I was like, are they making fun of us? I'm like, they can't make fun of us if we're making fun of ourselves, you know? Um, but yeah. yeah that's, that's the comedian lifestyle. <laughs> that's that's my whole <laughs> shtick. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> um, yeah, it was hard to transition from like that mindset to actually being like, okay, now we're playing like earnest music and I hope people like it. We're just like, I can't hide behind anything anymore. I'm not like, I don't have a persona um, on stage, you know, it's just me. Uh, so that was a weird transition, but yeah, I feel like once we, once we graduated from college and moved to Seattle and started playing shows in Seattle, it just kind of like naturally progressed in this way where we were writing. I still think like the lyrics I write, I try to be like clever and funny, but like it was definitely like, oh, I'm trying to make a more like earnest, song and like doing this i don't want people to make fun of us anymore <laughs> was any of that <laughs> but <laughs> did you feel was that like a personal feeling or were you really were like people were making fun of you no that's just me being like really insecure um i don't think people are making fun of us like 
maybe they were laughing with us, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, you, people you guys literally like people liked you right off the bat. That's like, how it felt. Started. Yeah. It felt like I wasn't like ready for the amount of attention we got right off the bat. Honestly, I was like, this is, for all of us, it was our first band and we didn't know what we were doing. Like no one teaches you how to like use pedals or like, do a sound check you know maybe they do now with like girls rock camp or whatever but um we didn't have that, that. <laughs> is that a thing girls rock yeah it is <laughs> yeah no it's a great thing i don't know why i said it in such a salty way but um hey you're jealous we didn't have oh kids <laughs> yeah. these days we didn't have that back in my day uh <laughs> but yeah no it's a great thing but but yeah we just had to kind of figure out what we're doing for ourselves and like deal with all these like unhappy sound guys just like i don't know we're all like really like people pleasers so i feel like early on we just like say yes to everyone just like do what we were told kind of and then it took us a while to figure out that like we can't please everyone like and then also like like the result of like whatever whoever we're working with um so yeah i feel like now we've like it just yeah it just took time so i'm always i'm still learning how to just like say no to people and be like stick to like how i feel like about creative things you know yeah um but yeah i don't even remember what the question was or yeah. no it's <laughs> this isn't like question based this is just conversation yeah no i totally feel what you're saying like with this at the start of the pandemic i couldn't do comedy anymore so i just was like shit i'm really depressed i need to talk to people and i just like started the podcast and it kind of like took off like my fifth nice. episode yeah. made to the front page of reddit or something and then i started like actually like finding what i liked in it but it is you don't like there's no one to help you along right That's the thing. Yeah. Does anyone have people to help them along or is everyone <laughs> just like figuring it out as they go like that i mean that's starting to realize yeah I feel like unless like your parents were in a band or something like that, I don't know, maybe some people have mentors, but like, yeah. And we had friends, we had like friends who we went to school with who were like really supportive and um, they were in a band and they called Dude York. And I feel like they were like a really good resource. So we did have people like to ask questions to, but um, yeah, it's not the same as just like doing it yourself and figuring it out like i didn't even know what sound check was for like the longest time i was like what are we, okay like sounds good and we didn't even play with um guitar pedals for like our first two albums we didn't really use pedals at all and i feel like someone mentioned like how like cool that was like what a, what a cool choice and we were like oh it's not a choice like we just don't have any Pedals. what do pedals do i'm so ignorant <laughs> <laughs> um they just like, like they're like effects pedals so they just make your guitar like sound different different tones like there's like a distortion pedal yeah. to make it sound like you know dirty or like a reverb pedal okay no, yeah <laughs> yeah like you know what reverb is yes i do yeah. <laughs> people yes. always ask for it on the podcast but i'm like it doesn't do they work. really on their speaking voice all they the want time reading? yeah they just that's think so weird <laughs> <laughs> i should get a pedal for the podcast yeah you should that would be yeah good. distortion pedal could sound pretty sick um, so you were saying earlier that you like made a conscious decision to write more like earnestly like i don't even think it was conscious but but yeah you, it did, just kind of happened were you making conscious efforts to write joke songs or is that just naturally what um, was coming to you? I don't think I, I don't know if I do anything consciously. <laughs> like looking back, I'm like, that's definitely what I was doing. But I don't think in the moment I like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was definitely like our first show that we played. We sat down and like, we're writing like really stupid lyrics. I feel like me and Gretchen um, for this, we played Beta Fest, Battle of the Bands. Um, and we performed this like one song that was five minutes long and dressed up, put on all this eyeliner and like wore shirts that had like the anarchy sign on it. And I, yeah, it was just like, that was a total joke. And, but it, it was kind of an entry point into like, let's actually do this, you know? And then once I had like my friends on board to play music with me, I was like, you know what, I'm going to write some more songs. 
Um, and yeah, I wanted to, them to be like kind of funny because I didn't have any experience writing songs and it just felt more natural to do it that way, I guess. But then, yeah, and, and it was like, again, just like we're playing at like frat parties. Like, you know, you gotta know your audience. Um, and then when we moved to Seattle, we were playing like actual like real shows. And I was like, okay. What we kept probably... you going after college? Like together? Like, um, you know, it's like all move kind of crazy yeah. that we kept doing it because I know like Lydia had uh, applied for a job in Hawaii and like Annie was living at, in New Orleans for a bit. Um, but we had played a couple shows in Seattle our senior year of college and like it felt really good and we were all kind of stoked on it so um yeah I don't know I was really like I knew I really wanted to keep doing band stuff um and I was maybe like pushing other people to keep doing it with me but I wasn't sure what would happen and then it just it ended up working out so you had that feeling while you you got that feeling in college oh yeah once I started playing shows and like writing songs and like feeling how like how that felt i was like i, I gotta keep doing this so and i think you, i would have you were kept so doing nervous it to even. get on stage yeah well it's i got like liquid courage you know <laughs> in college <Yeah. laughs> no i feel you <laughs> i'm still nervous to get on stage it's like when will i stop being nervous it's not it doesn't come naturally to me i i get that but i think i like that adrenaline rush of like you're like oh fuck i'm yeah. why am i even doing this like should i turn around right now yeah, and yeah. Then, like, you have to go out on stage and then like it's like fight or flight totally and once i'm out on stage i'm usually like chill it's like the just the lead leading up time i'm like fuck what am i doing oh yeah. like, waiting in the way right before for me yeah that's the yeah. worst like yeah that happened to me last night i had a show up in portland maine at this like big theater and i had done the theater before i it was my favorite room but standing like before to go on stage like yeah i was almost like why did i do this it's the and, worst then you get up, <laughs> and then you get up there and that's when the experience kicks in yeah because you were talking about not doing anything consciously and i think life is all about trying to get into that flow state so that's why i was asking about that is because yeah totally when you're on stage, you're in that flow state. You're not there. Yeah, I feel like I do kind of become someone else. Like, no matter what, I just, like, go to, like, show mode. I go into, like, this weird, different mode that doesn't feel like my regular brain, you know? What's different, different about feeling. it? Um, I feel, like, hyper-focused in this weird way. And, like, time kind of slows down. Um. Yeah, it's just that like adrenaline rush. It's exciting, but scary. Yeah. And they say that you live. I don't know. I don't know who said this. <laughs> I, I, I have long story. I have a shaman and he said this. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, say. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, who says that? Like, he, <laughs> and he said this to me and it made sense where like when you're in those flow states, you're living two seconds in the future whoa and that yeah. kind of like that's the only way i can make sense of comedy is like if i'm gonna make a joke i have to know what's happening before it happens in totally. the room and i but i can't like it's it blew my mind kind of like trying yeah. to figure that out yeah that kind of makes sense to me because time does move differently when you're on stage it's like a whole different experience when you're on a creative path time moves differently like i don't see like seasons like i don't <laughs> see like days i just see like a goal that i have to get towards and a clock that's yeah down you know totally yeah i measure time by album cycles you know <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you were you have to do work in, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah but i i did feel that way for a while because when we were touring a lot I would kind of just have so much free time between tours so like my day-to-day -day, I would wake up and be like what the fuck am I doing today like I have nothing planned but then like my my year was planned out maybe like the next two years were like 
planned out for me. So it was this weird feeling of like, I don't know what I'm doing like right this moment, but I have like all these plans mm. like in the future. I uh, Yeah. And then you just like, for me, if I have a day where I do, do nothing, I'll literally just like lay in bed. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, that's literally all I'll, I'll be like, wait, yeah, that use that day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't rush creativity, though. You know, sometimes how, you got you need that day to just do nothing. How do you find your muse? Um, well, she's an elusive beast. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. I like it. Yeah, I feel like by putting myself into like emotional turmoil maybe that's that's one <laughs> that's one way uh and then yeah i don't know songs like i feel like i can go through a period of like just writing starting to write a bunch of songs and just nothing sticking like i'm not liking anything and then um i just land on something that like really works and that's how I know it's a good song because I'm like oh I want to keep playing that like for me now I feel like I'm kind of like jaded and I've already like written so many songs that I'll, I'll start writing a song and be like oh it sounds like this other song or I don't know it's just like nothing feels new about it um so yeah I'm just like I wait for that like spark you know I'm yeah. always like waiting for like that feeling like ooh, this is this is a good song but do you like, like force God. yourself to like sit down and write um not really i don't i don't know if i force myself i try to like pick up a guitar like when i'm feeling it some days i just don't feel like playing guitar but um yeah i don't know i don't know like i'm i just have to be in a mood i guess and then like i don't i don't like forcing myself to like play guitar or like write when i'm just not in the mood to do that but sometimes you have to sometimes you do have to like just get things moving yeah um, i think i'm at that place now where i like just let it flow for so long that i'm like damn like i i don't have any structure anymore like i need to get back to the structure yeah yeah that can help if you're like having a writer's block or something do you like tour life like do you like being busy all the time like having like all right we do this and then we have to go here then we have to go here like tour yeah i do like touring i think for a second there we were doing it so much that i was just like completely exhausted but um yeah having a couple years off from it i actually kind of missed it um yeah it's not even necessarily the shows that i miss it's like just like hanging out with my bandmates and like doing stupid there's like a lot of downtime when you're on tour where you're just waiting around for the next thing and that and like in those moments i feel like we have a lot of fun we're just like doing stupid shit to make each other laugh and i and that's like my favorite part of tour yeah but um yeah it's fun i think it's fun being like knowing what i have to do every day and just being like having that goal like we're gonna play a show here tonight like drive there get to the show play it like that's all i, I really have to think about today um and as long as I'm doing that, then I'm like, I'm set, you know, like in day to day life, I'm just like, I don't know what, to, like, am I being productive? Like, what should I do? <laughs> but I don't ever feel that way on tour. So that that is nice. Yeah. But then you get back to normal life and you're like, wait, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, it's always there. a rough transition. You're like, wait, what the fuck? And I, I also like miss that time in the van where I'm just like sitting in the back and just like listening to music or like playing a phone game and just like completely not thinking about anything mm -hmm. like i feel like i don't give myself that time in real life and day-to-day -day life you know like just to sit and just like not feel like i have to get anything done like i'm just like i'm driving somewhere i'm waiting that's the um, relaxation that you need yeah like, yeah it's, bed, it's meditative it's just, yeah mm-hmm because it is meditative, but I've, yeah. Do you meditate at all? Do you? Um, I've tried to, I feel like I'm too antsy. <laughs> to, I actually did like a week long silent meditation retreat a few years ago. And I just, it made me feel like there's something wrong with me. Cause like everyone else was able to stay so still. And I had like, 
I just was so fidgety. Oh, my um, knee's been shaking this whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I can't sit still. Uh, my friend's but, on one right now out in Western Mass. Like, oh, really? Yeah, one of those silent retreats. Could yeah, never it was. One. It was like one of the hardest things I've ever done. The silent part of it, honestly, like wasn't that hard for me. I was, I'm, I was chill with that. It was just like sitting there with yourself. Um, yeah, it was a challenge, but. I'm glad I did it because now I know what's up with that. But it's hard for me to get myself to. I'm just like bad with routines in general. So like, yeah, in my mind, it would be really nice to have like this morning routine where I'm like meditating and doing yoga, or whatever. Like, but I just have maybe I've done that and stuck to it like two days in a row, and and then and I'm done. Mm. I like the, I see, I, it's like, I could never do a 10 day retreat, but I do like a 10 minute headspace meditation. I try to do it every morning because I feel like I can handle that. And then yeah. I, realize I can't even sit still for 10 minutes. Like my mind's racing, my body's like twitching. Yeah, like I need sure. to control myself for 10 minutes. <laughs> do you feel like it makes a difference in your day? Like when you do a headspace? Meditation. everything that's good for you like everything i feel like working out the mental like yoga and meditation like even eating healthy and vitamins you if you like when i think about it like that it'll never feel like it's helping until i get into right. a crisis state and then if i'm yeah. in a crisis state and i already have routines i can like manage the crisis state better but if i'm like uh, like the pat like last week I was in a crisis state and I was off my routine. So I was like, I, I you know, that meme where like the yeah. dog sitting and everything's on fire around him. Like, <laughs> yeah. that, that was me. Cause I did not know, like I was out. Of yeah. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I have, I feel like the only routine I have, and it's not really a routine. It's just like bike going on a bike ride. Mm -hmm. I had, I kind of had more of a routine when I was in LA cause I just like didn't have any friends and I had a lot of free time. So I just would like go on my bike ride. That was like, my daily thing and it felt kind of like meditation in a way because i'd like usually just do the same route and just like kind of turn my brain off oh it totally is that's when i do most of my writing is like when i'm on a walk or a run or a bike ride because like yeah if i'm sitting still i'm gonna check my phone or i'm gonna look at the wall totally. <laughs> but if i'm riding yeah. my bike my i can't do anything other than that and then my mind is free to focus yeah i get that sometimes too actually when i'm driving um like sometimes i'll just drive without any music or like noise and all well, that's, that's <laughs> and then, like psychopathic tendencies right <laughs> yeah <there. laughs> it's just like i need some silence so it actually feels really good um but <laughs> no but that's no. <laughs> actually a good way of like writing stuff because if i if i've been playing a song and trying to write lyrics that song will probably just like start playing in my head and then like almost subconsciously i start like filling in lyrics um, I've definitely like written a lot of lyrics that way. Where do you? And think then I just like come? repeat them. I'm like, oh shit, I can't even write this down right now. Where do you think those ideas come from? I know this is a more of a philosophical question, but honestly, like rhythms and lyrics, like where do you think that comes from? It's magic. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, it, it probably comes from like other things that I've heard and like deciding what like what chord changes do I really like like what what gives me like a certain feeling when I'm listening to music um and I feel like I probably pick up things subconsciously from other songs and then even if something I play isn't totally like ripped off from another song like it might have like similarities or like it gives me that same feeling that I've gotten from other songs that's funny, the completely ripped off from other songs. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about uh, Chazzy Bell and like what song is like that you guys have is like that, like that song. Um, yeah, I mean, I never like consciously do it, but then like looking but back, I'll be like, that shit, that's like a that, Weezer melody or something. Yeah, like yeah. I feel like in, we have the song Time to Go Home and like there's this part where I like do these ooze and I'm pretty sure it's 
a melody from a Weezer song. And then don't get sued. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't be giving this away. Weezer's I mean, watching like, this podcast. It's, it's different. It's different. <laughs> no, can kidding. you can you get sued over a melody? I don't even know. I don't think so. And um, I don't think I don't think he's watching this podcast. <laughs> I doubt it. Rivers. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? They ripped us off. So in a way we're even because they we took these uh or we did this whole like ren fair style video uh last summer for our song fear and then took a bunch of like press photos in our like ren fair gear oh, that's and, your apple music photo yeah yeah and then we saw that weezer did the same thing like a few months ago <laughs> and drake did it too i'm just like damn we're trendsetters <laughs> Yeah, you're like, I had no idea they liked my shit this <laughs> Yeah. I was actually wondering where that so came I, from. Someone in their management probably honestly like probably saw it. There's it's it's pretty likely that they like they were coming up with ideas and they they probably like looked at a lot of different band press photos. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I really think that they did rip us off. I have someone i i won't you name names, but someone uh, you would get someone who's on the same management was like oh for sure they did that but like that's something that they would do so yeah was that was that like a photographer's idea or was that your like you guys's i i, oh, I was I, our I, idea i was gonna we ask that where that photo came while. from yeah yeah we we'd had that idea for a while um gretchen and i started going to the washington renaissance fair like a few years ago so we got really into it um slowly started like accumulating more and more like uh ren fair gear for our costumes but yeah oh, she's so you're like into it yeah we already had gretchen and i already had the costumes and then like lydia and annie just like borrowed some stuff from people but um yeah actually it's it's coming up this year i think we're gonna go like next weekend Oh wow! Can't wait, but I kind of at this point I've just like worn that elf costume so many times that I'm like maybe I should switch it up. Um, you have a week to figure it out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. Yeah, Gretchen always wears this paper bag hat that she made. It's like a Trader Joe's paper bag hat, and she's moved maybe like three times and moved with that exact hat. That she paper just be like, going to Trader Joe's and lying to you. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. It looks really worn. It, it, this is like the kind of thing that Gretchen would do. Like she's she's worn the same shirt on every Saturday for the past like ten years, more than that maybe. It's her Saturday shirt. So, I, yeah, this just totally checks out as something Gretchen would do. I was See, thinking about getting that's her like good. A She's better at routines than you and me. Yeah, she she <laughs> really is. Um, she's definitely good at routines. <laughs> I've learned something from her. Yeah, I feel like it's a give and take. Like as we, as you said in the beginning, it's like there's pluses and like everything is good at like there's pluses and minuses to it. Like there's a plus is just being creative and free. Cause then you're like open to more experiences, which then you can rely on, but yeah. then it's also good to be the like textbook, like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to study. I'm going to get this and I'm going to totally. work on it like that. I'm a yeah, more, how do you balance that? 100%. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Especially if you're like your own boss then like, how do you, you have to create your own structure. Like it's just exhausting after a while. It's like, to make so many decisions throughout the day you know well, sometimes I, I do just like want someone to tell me what to do that's how i feel about like a manager but then i don't want and like <laughs> at the end of the day i am like a i'm a 25 year old stoner comedian who talk like goes on rap like hangs with rappers like i'm a wild like my lifestyle is wild but i do want to be like more I want to be able to be wild, but still like do my work, like be able to send yeah. email up at 8 a.m. and send wild, but email. professional. Yeah. Yeah. You saw how it's, I was with booking. Like, balance. I don't know what I just. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a good job. I mean, you got me here. Yes. Uh, thank you. I know. <laughs> I'm, I am really happy that we're having this conversation. Yeah. I'm stoked. Um, I, I never know when I say yes to a podcast. I'm like, whew, this could be rough. <laughs> well, see, I, no one ever like, 
no one ever believes me. But now I uh, Harvard, uh, the Harvard Crimson, I could have never gotten into Harvard, wrote an article about me like a month wow. ago. And now I feel like I have something where it's like, all right, I have something I can send to people where it's like not just some it's rapper like, that you might not know. Like, yeah. Like you probably you don't do know have Conway. a voice for podcasts. I feel like I have a like I feel like it. talking to you. I feel like I'm listening to a podcast. <laughs> I don't know if that's good so, or bad. <laughs> I mean, I think it's good if you're if you're podcasting. I understand. <laughs> yeah. I no, but like <laughs> I'm one of those people. Like I write plays, but I hate theater. Like I, I'm a podcaster, but I don't really listen to right, right, podcasts. Right. I love podcasts. I, that's like something I'll listen to on a bike ride. Mm. Um, yeah i don't really like i went through a phase where i just like really couldn't listen to music for a while i think it was just like ear fatigue or something yeah so it was either silence or podcasts that's like i don't listen to podcasts anymore i used to listen to them a yeah. lot but it's how do you then keep sense. your passion in it like how do you come back to it like it's, it's a great tough. question it's tough yeah <laughs> i feel like i'll like completely lose interest and like i'll like lose all hope like i have like existential crises like all the time um but then something will like happen to inspire me or like yeah i don't know i feel like people other people like other musicians who i really like um kind of saying that like i inspire them like that inspires me you know i'm like oh shit yeah maybe i am onto something like um so I don't know. I keep thinking that I'm going to quit, but I just don't think I feel like I'll be writing music for as long as I'm alive, you know, like really? I can't really help it. Quit? Um, like, yeah, I kind of thought that like after Chastity Belt toured with Kurt Vile in my head, I was like, well, this is probably our last tour, like our last, our final hurrah. And then we went on tour and I forgot like how much I love touring and like we had such a good time. I was like, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to keep doing this but I, it's just a little bit harder because um some of my bandmates are like back in school or like have these like real kind of full-time jobs now so and we don't all live in the same city anymore so it just like makes it a little harder but you're going out and you're doing it solo like yeah i am i don't need them <laughs> well no it's it's not bad <laughs> But it is a little sad to hear you be like, yeah, I don't know this. I might quit. Like, <gasps> yeah, I mean, I'm not going to quit, but like it's it is kind of like thrilling to think that I could quit. You know, I feel like that keeps me going. I don't like feeling stuck. Like doing something, you know, it is like it's a relief to know that I could quit. Yeah. And go. But you said earlier, like you wouldn't want a regular job. Like you don't like regular jobs. No. Like it's kind of the which soul are you gonna that's where I'm at. Now. Like what yeah. I think, God, like a real dilemma I'm having is people ask to pay to come on the podcast. And oh wow for me, it's like I could get money that way, but feel like I'm selling my soul. Or I could sell my soul with a real job. And it's like yeah. this double edged sword of which I'm gonna pick. Cause I also don't, totally. I want to keep my like, I like keeping it separate. Like I like having a job that's like, that's how I earn money. And then like keeping music more pure, but, and that's how yeah, I, I feel like it took a second to get there. Yeah. And I feel gross, like want, like taking money for something. I don't really you love. You could always like, um, make money off of ads. Right. Yeah. And I do do that. Like this yeah. is, I mean, I don't have much overhead at my, you know, where I am and everything, but like, this is my full-time job, like with stand up in the podcast, but of course I'm in middle of nowhere, Massachusetts. Like I'm in the middle of Massachusetts, like literally the center. So like, I do need more money to then grow and get bigger and yeah. you know, do that. Seems like you're onto something though. I mean, that sounds like a sick life, just like doing comedy in a podcast. Sounds like, like a sick life. And what yeah, you're doing too. No, I mean, yeah, now that I've seen this, like this side, I don't think I could work in an office ever, you know, like, mm -hmm. I feel like if I went straight from college into like having some kind of boring office job, maybe I would be able to handle that because I just didn't know what else was out there. But now that I know, 
I could never go back. Yeah. I had a good job out of college on, you know where Cape Cod is? I've been there Cod? once when I was, <laughs> I've heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I lived on Cape Cod after college. I had a really good job there, like marketing managing, but I would still drive two hours back and forth every night to like do stand up. And it was like, even when I did that, it didn't make me love it. It made me like hate it more because I was like, right. I can literally see how this is taking away time from my, yeah, from what I'm trying to do. But the thing you were talking about people who you are inspired by being inspired by you, that is the thing that keeps you going. Totally. Yeah. And I feel like that that's like always kind of what's kept chastity law going is just like people believing in us from the beginning. Like when we kind of thought that we sucked, like we had friends being like, you, there's something about like, I guess the way that we played music together. Um, it was like, it just felt new. Like people hadn't heard that before. I don't know. I don't, I like, I don't think maybe I'm ignorant, but I don't really think that chastity belt sounds like any other particular band you know like i yeah. feel like we have like our own original sound and i feel like part of that is because we just started writing music together um and we kind of like developed this like musical language together you know we like learned how to play music with other people together and we all like can almost like anticipate what the other person's gonna play um and kind of like work around it and like listen and find space how long have you guys been a band technically since 2010 that's like when we played that beta fest show uh but not like i would say like not seriously it's been like 10 years of like playing like real shows that aren't just like college yeah. parties and um, they say it takes 10 years to master something wow yeah, we've mastered it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and now yeah. you want to give it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're done. We've we've done it. We've mastered it. Let's move on. No. How did you guys link up with Kurt Vile? Um, so we went on a tour with Courtney Barnett, I think in maybe like 2015 or 2016. Uh, and then got really close with her, um, had a great time on that tour. And then she and Kurt Vile became close and started like writing songs together. And they put out that album together and like toured it. Um, I think she played Kurt, uh, our album that had just come out at that time. And he was really into it. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I met him. We all met him, I think, when the two of them came through Seattle and toured. That was the first time we met him. And then we just kind of like stayed in touch. Um, yeah. And we'd always wanted to tour with him, but like it didn't happen for a while. So yeah, we'd known him for a while and then finally got the chance to tour with him back in May. And then how did the song come together? Oh yeah. Um, well, I feel like Kurt's just always trying to like get people to collaborate with him. But uh, yeah, he wrote this song that he thought sounded like a Chastity Belt song. Um, and then he like shouts us out in the lyrics, which was really nice. But yeah, so he was in LA recording uh, and just like, we all happened to be there at the same time. And he was like, yeah, come into the studio and check out this song that I wrote. Uh, and we all kind of just like had a day in the studio to just like fuck around um and play on top of it and like sing that's pretty cool yeah yeah it, and that's my awesome. favorite song off of that that new album that's a great a great track it's so good yeah um yeah he wasn't playing that live when we toured unfortunately but oh maybe this next tour yeah that would be cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you like collaborating like do you like collaborating with other artists or are you more to yourself like you made those whole your solo albums like just you um i like collaborating if i have like the same taste and stuff as uh, other people mm -hmm. um yeah i think i prefer collaborating but i also like the convenience of like 
doing stuff myself. So it's it's nice to have both. Sometimes I like don't have the patience to wait to make a song into like a full band song. I'm like excited about the song. I just want to like get it down. But yeah, I love collaborating when it when it works. Like and I feel like it so easily works with my band. It's so like seamless that it's just really nice to get together and play anything together because we can just jam on anything um and it feels good like yeah. we don't it doesn't feel awkward like sometimes i'll jam with like new people for the first time usually men and they're like oh what chord is that i'm like i don't know like what <laughs> what key is this what key is this in i don't fucking know you we're just know playing what right this is in? like yeah i'm just playing chords i don't know but see, those aren't the free spirited people those are yeah. the, the people who need the structure they don't want to yeah totally you're right yeah those are the nerds exactly yeah yeah <laughs> fuck nerds music theory <laughs> i just use my ears <laughs> Literally, yeah, people will talk about that with comedy like laughs per minute and i'll be oh, like oh, shut the insane. fuck up like it makes me it makes me like feel gross it's like no yeah like I don't know. It's not a science. It's a, it's an art. You're like, yeah, it's like you're <laughs> overthinking it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you ever do? This is so weird. You guys played solid sound. Did you What's guys that? do solid sound at Wilco's, Maybe? Fest? Wilco's festival oh, out in no, West Virginia? No, we didn't. Um, okay. I was like, I swear shout out seen you guys. To Jeff Tweedy. We'd love to play that. <laughs> That's such a great festival. He's a fan. He's a fan. Oh, you should definitely do that festival. Yeah. I'm I don't getting know why on, we're not um, getting asked to play festivals. I feel like, I, yeah, I feel like we don't play that many festivals. So Coachella, we're out here. We're you ready. Gotta, you got to, they're not listening. I hope Tweety's made it this far <laughs> into the podcast. Like, <laughs> you that, never know. Do you, like, do you reach, like, like for that, like, do you have to reach out or do, do you We have a wait? booking agent. Oh, uh, yeah, we we have someone working on that for us. <laughs> I'm getting, have you ever heard of the band Kamikaze Palm Tree? Uh, no. Uh, so they're coming on next week and they're opening um, for Wilco on tour right now. But um, I just wasn't sure because not, I don't think your sounds are the same at all, but I, I feel like it's cut from the same cloth. So I just wasn't sure if you. That's cool. They're opening for Wilco. Yeah. And it's Maybe like, put really in a word like, Jeff Tweedy. <laughs> They're really <laughs> grungy and like punk, and it's cool that Wilco cool. would have bands like that. Like Wilco had a, a rapper at both the last two solid sounds. Which That's awesome. Like, I like when the the opening band is super different from the headlining band. Like it's nice to have switch it up a little bit. One hundred percent. Yeah, like, I was thinking for our next tour we should have like a magician open. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I and would maybe, say, just, I would maybe say, comedian, you know, maybe I, I, we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it is so funny, though, like opening up for rap shows, like I'm hosting this big rap festival in New York next week. And like people get so upset when I first walk on stage because they think I'm going to rap or they oh, like, yeah, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> like I got oh, this. I got a uh, book to open up for Wu-Tang Clan on Juneteenth. Oh, shit. And like that's an honor, but like you got to understand yeah. the audience was like hated me until I Damn. like got them to laugh. But I was like, do you know who you're booking? Like I'm the nerd yeah. white guy in the world. You can't. That's book a lot of pressure. A, a Juneteenth show opening for Wu Tang. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. You open for them though. Yeah, crazy. When does your tour start? We're wrapping it up. Thank you for um, giving your time for this. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, my tour, I think. It starts like early October. The the Kurt Vile dates start like October twelfth, I wanna say, but um I'm gonna do some headlining dates uh driving from Seattle to the first show on the East Coast. So like all I haven't announced those yet, but um yeah, I'm gonna play like Chicago, Minneapolis, New York, DC. Um, and that'll be like early October. New York City or uh Western? Uh Brooklyn. Okay. New York I'm City. Gonna, yeah. I'm gonna try to pop out to that. I have a, a studio in Brooklyn, so oh sweet. A podcast. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna be at Babies. 
Oh, that's awesome. Easy. Yeah. That's awesome. And you guys are playing in Boston too. So I'll try to, I live in Mass. So I'll try to pop up to that one. Oh, we're not, we're actually not playing that show. With oh. Kurt. I think our, we end in Toronto, but yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll oh, see well. you right then. <laughs> I mean, I love Boston, but um, yeah, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do a solo show in Boston. <laughs> <gasps> yeah. It'll, it'll happen eventually i don't know i'm i feel like every time we play in boston i've been like we're not like i chastity belts had some weird shows in boston so really oh i know we're wrapping up but i want to hear what happened in boston i don't i just like it's like a weird vibe i don't know like just i we've never had like a show that feels like we have like good like big fans there maybe we played actually one really fun show in boston um at like it's called like the middle east or something yeah the middle east mm -hmm. yeah we did play a good show there i forgot about that one but yeah i don't know it's just like an odd place i haven't really figured it out it feels like very college collegey yeah but it's like finance bro college it's not like okay. yeah. it's not like fun like free it's not like fun flirty like yeah <laughs> exactly it's no. not, you gotta do the amers like amers <laughs> is fun and flirty if you want, like and college <laughs> okay yeah i'm all into like fun flirty college that's where jay that lives and uh yeah oh cool so it's like you know it's like a college town, but it's like Boston with like yeah, it's like a little like, Boston with like an edge, like if everyone was just stone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Well, anyway, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 yeah,